A PhD isn't necessarily intellectually challenging or difficult. There are a ton of other things that go into a PhD that are far more difficult, but that doesn't mean it's easy sailing. But if you have managed to get to the beginning of your PhD, you've managed to convince someone to allow you to be part of their PhD program, then that is a good sign that you are able to do a PhD. Now, the thing is, is that a PhD isn't always intellectually rewarding. You know, there are tons of things that you do during a PhD that are just so simple, benign, filling out paperwork, washing glassware if you're doing chemistry. All of these things are not intellectually difficult at all. They rely on you doing stuff. And also, I think a PhD isn't as intellectually kind of difficult because hopefully you've chosen a project that you're interested in working on. Now, difficulty can come from the fact that you just don't want to learn do a, a research experiment or learn about a topic because it's just not interesting to you. For me, during chemistry, that was like batteries. Batteries were just so boring to me that I just didn't really like it. I didn't want to understand about it. So of course, a PhD on batteries would be really difficult for me to do, but I didn't do a PhD on batteries. I did it in solar technology. That was more interesting to me. Yes, do you know what? It's strange. There was some sort of like crossover between the technologies and information I used and needed to understand. But overall, I preferred the solar angle to that question than the battery stuff. So if you're doing something that you actually like, there's no reason why it needs to be difficult. Um, and of course, what is difficult to someone else isn't always difficult for you. As long as you're working towards what interests you, you'll want to spend the time, the effort to understand it. My undergraduate years, I had to learn about a ton of different things that I had no interest in, and that was intellectually difficult. Now, I actually felt at my absolute cleverest right at the end of my undergraduate master's. I did a master's in chemistry, and when I graduated, just before going to do my PhD, I actually felt like I knew so much about chemistry, about all of the assets of chemistry, all of the different components, the fields. You know, to get to this point, I needed to understand a massive, big book full of information. Oh, let me go get it, it's massive. Ah, look at this. These are all of, well, not all of them. These are some of the books that I've got left from doing my undergraduate. I've got physical chemistry. I've got inorganic chemistry. I knew pretty much everything in these books, which was just insane. I've got chemistry of the elements, which is, uh, I don't know, a weird book about all the <laughs> periodic table. <laughs> you know, felt like I had all of that information in my head. I'd proven myself only recently that I was able to understand difficult, challenging subjects in uh, my field. But when I started my PhD, I feel like as you get more sort of specialized, you start to forget some of the really foundational stuff. I actually learned about this when after my PhD, I did a postdoc and I started to lecture. During my lecture sort of like preparation, I was like, oh yeah, I'll be able to do chemistry, like introductory chemistry or foundational chemistry, that'll be easy. And then I was like, oh God, what is the name of that thing again? Or how does that work? And what's the calculation and formula for this? And I'd realized I'd forgotten about all of this really foundational chemistry that actually didn't relate to my PhD or what I was doing at the time. And that's because a load of things actually become like a black box. During your PhD, there is like the black box effect where you just know that if you plug this number into this equation that's all automated normally, um, you get this number. You actually sort of like forget the fundamentals, how everything actually works. Sure, you can go and sort of like look it up. But for me, in chemistry, I was like, ah, there's a little sort of uh, machine in the lab and I just take my sample and put it in and put these buttons in and do these parameters. And yes, I could understand it if I wanted, but things become black boxes. And uh, you don't need to be clever to plug some numbers in. In fact, sometimes, you know, I could allow people just to run my experiments for me by just telling them the parameters that I needed them to put into the machine. And, uh, you know, actually the nuts and bolts of doing research, you're not always thinking thinking about the foundational stuff about what's going on inside, you are thinking about the creative aspects of your work, i.e. what do I need to do to get a certain result? How do I do that? And uh, that I think is why a PhD is difficult because it starts to rely less on intellect, you've proven that, it starts to rely on creativity and a few other key components that uh, just aren't taught in university. And then you get to the beginning of your PhD and you're like, oh, oh my God, 
oh, I need to be aware of all these other things. And there are loads of really clever people that can't get PhDs because for a variety of reasons, they just aren't capable of getting through the challenges. Let's talk about that. During my PhD, my postdoc, and years in research afterwards, I actually saw loads of clever people really struggle with their PhD, and also people that, you know, maybe weren't the best academically during their undergraduate do incredibly well. And that's because they found their passion, they found their strife, but also they have a mixture of other aspects that are actually relatively difficult to obtain, unless you sort of like have them naturally or you develop them sort of inadvertently during your undergraduate, or you, you kind of make an effort to develop during your research, when you start to realize, oh, actually it's not about what I know, it's about all these other things as well. So, first of all, great mental health. Like, I don't think there's anything that uh, can damage your mental health more than a project that is not going well, that has an open end and no supportive supervisors. You know, it can really sort of snowboard any mental health issues you have. Making sure that you have the tools is one of the most important things. Like, actually, it's not something that gets taught in nearly any degree unless you're learning about these sort of like tools, mental health, social work or psychology, every single person that's thinking about going into research should actually do a course on mental health, resilience, how to just sort of like understand when they need to take a break, how to sort of like reach out to people if they're not feeling well. Remember that your PhD is reliant on you at being at your best throughout the entire sort of like program, whether that's five years, three years, 10 years, whatever it is. So making sure and prioritizing your mental health, even though it feels like a step back and like you're slowing down or that sort of stuff, it can actually help you sort of like complete the marathon of doing a PhD. There's no doubt that determination and grit also plays into the uh, aspect of what makes a PhD difficult. If you are the sort of person that gives up very easily and you sort of like are distracted or like you just wanna do the things that work, that is really tough. PhDs rely on failure after failure after failure and then finding something that works and then doubling down on that. The problem is, is that determination and grit is really required to get through that constant failure. And also remember, you've got your supervisor, your peers providing you with constant, what they like to call, feedback. But of course it's criticism. It is like, it feels like a personal attack because you are your research, your research is you. And so it takes a lot to sort of like brush off that think about it, synthesize all of those sort of like uh, criticisms, what it means, where you need to go, and then sort of build on it. So determination is a huge component in deciding the success of a PhD, not necessarily intellect. Now this is where intellect kind of like overlaps with something, and it's emotional intelligence or emotional intellect. EQ, I think they call it. Um, it's about the ability to be able to work with others, to understand and empathize with other people so that you can sort of like build great healthy relationships. Because during your time in your PhD, you are gonna disagree with your supervisor, with other people in the field, with people in your lab. You're gonna annoy loads of people, loads of people that are gonna annoy you. And so having the emotional intelligence to be able to work through um, those issues, understand people's perspectives, you know, come to compromises is so important in determining the success of your PhD. It is actually one of the hardest things to actually develop on your own because it takes so much self-reflection that quite often we haven't had the time to do until it's too late. So emotional intelligence, the ability to kind of reflect on your own sort of like uh, emotional state during your PhD and then able to sort of like work that in with other people's emotional states um, really means that you'll end up with a nice uh, supervisory team because you know everyone will be working together towards the same goal and you'll be able to sort of improve that relationship, make it lovely and nice. They're going to want to help you more which is important. You'll be able to help the people in your team, you'll be able to work nicely, you know that's what it's all about. So emotional intelligence I think is far more important, especially during sort of like the later stages of your PhD than actual intelligence, i.e. what you know from all the books you read. Finally, work ethic. Just the ability to get in and do work. Turn up nine to five, eight till three, eight till six, whatever it is, whatever you need to do to actually be productive enough to get a PhD. Um, that is so very important because we do not sort of uh, 
We do not have a punch in, punch out time during a PhD. A lot of times you can come and go as you want, unless you've got like a super micromanaging supervisor and then they say, you know, you need to be in the lab on a Sunday, on a Saturday, whatever it is. But treat your PhD like a job. And I think that that will help you get to the end quicker and with more results, easier. Turn up when you don't want to. It's a job, turn up, turn up, just turn up. So there we have it. Is a PhD intellectually difficult? My argument would be no. If you have got to the beginning of a PhD and you've been accepted into a position, you have proven that you are intellectually robust enough to be able to do a PhD. That doesn't mean there won't be challenges along the way, but a lot of the time the challenge isn't about understanding something and coming up with creative ideas. It's about other aspects that we talked about in this video, whether it's your mental health, whether it's your determination or grit, your emotional intelligence, or your work ethic. Those are the things that actually determine whether or not a PhD is difficult. Let me know in the comments what you would add, and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my ebook, The Ultimate academic writing toolkit as well as the PhD survival guide and I'll see you in the next video.